So now let's talk about the single phase tire steer rectifier. So it is uh, like a, a diode rectifier, but we have uh, four uh, tire steers connected like that. And of course, in a more general case, we have the line inductance as the diode in a rectifier, and also we can have some inductances as the load. And again, if that inductance is uh, quite large enough, then we can model the secondary like a, a ideal current source. So anyway, let's uh, simplify that thing in our first simulations. And again, now the inductance on the grid side is ignored and we have an ideal current source. So now we have like one, two, three, four uh, thyristors and similar to diode rectifiers, they will be working in pairs. So one of the current is you know, in one period, the current will be coming through T1 and T4. And in the next, uh, in the next cycle, when uh, Vs is negative, I can have T3 and T4. Okay, so the idea is same. And actually, if you uh, keep the firing angle zero, so firing angle zero means whenever uh, the thyristor is forward by us, I can fire it at, at that instant. So it is uh, behaving like a diode. Okay, so the outputs when the alpha is equal to zero, it is the same thing we discussed with the uh, single phase diode rectifiers. So that is your output voltage. It is, you know, rectified and your input current is like a square waveform and your output current is uh, is ideal current source so it is dc but our voltage uh, output voltage is a rectified signal so the question is what happens if alpha is not equal to zero but something uh, larger than zero so let's look at you know that angles and we will discuss uh, and now Actually, you know, in they were working in pairs, either T1 and T2 are working together and T4 and T4 is uh, working together. So actually, when we apply a gate signal, when we apply a gate signal, that will start a conduction and the other uh, pair will be off. So let's have a look at those waveforms. So alpha is again measured from uh, the instant that it becomes forward biased so I'm waiting until here so we will talk about that region and let's say I just fired that point and in that point uh, T1 and T2 are conducting so whenever you know Vs is you know both positive and I apply gate signals so at that instant at that instant my current is flowing through T1, going through current source and coming back like that, right? So in this case, my, you know, those are assumed to be ideal. So my output voltage will be same as my input voltage. So I'm following that current, right? So then in the next cycle, if it were a diode, it will just uh, jump onto the next rectified cycle. But now I delay, so I delay, sorry. I delay the firing of T3 and T4 for alpha degrees. So they are, if I fire it, they are in the position of conducting. But since I didn't apply a gate signal, they didn't get into the conduction mode. So the only way for that current source to draw is the existing uh, T T1 and T2 path. So this will, you know, keep conducting even if you know even if the output uh, sorry source voltage gets into the negative region because for those ones uh, basically the you know the current uh, whenever the current is flowing that way they will uh, keep carrying the current. Okay, so as a result, you know, my output voltage now gets into the negative region. So now at that instant, at that instant, T3 and T4 are fired. So 
So you just apply a gate signal. Okay, then then my path. Let me clean that a little bit. So at first uh, T1 and T2 are conducting like that. So now when I fired up, so the current path is going to change. Now I mean you are still carrying DC current through that path, but now the current path is reversed. Okay, so as a result, what I see at the output voltage is uh, minus Vs, the inverse voltage, and also the current direction is reversed. So let's look at the graphs. So now this is my actual Vs. Vs was in the negative region. So at the output now I see the reverse of that one. So my voltage just jumped from that position to that position. And if you look at to the current, okay, my current was positive and it was still flowing in that way. So now my path is uh, reversed. So my current ID is now reversed. Uh, negative with respect to is direction so now it is a current and it's still like square waveform but now it is like that so the important thing and you can now you know think if it were just uh, repeating itself you have the same cycle so that is why we have that characteristics so as you can see now the average voltage, if I want to calculate the average voltage in the diode rectifier, it was, you know, the sign, the area under that full sign. Now I have that area for output voltage, right? And I have that negative area. So I have to calculate, you know, that positive area and subtract that area and divide it by P, then it will give us uh, the average voltage, okay? So compared, if you compare it with the diode case, uh, you are, you know, not applying that voltage and then you are subtracting that voltage. So you have a reduction of A alpha. And if alpha is moved even further, then your output voltage uh, gets smaller. Okay, so now let's look at that voltage. So how can you calculate the average voltage so now uh, let's try to uh, calculate it so it is uh, simple so what is going to do I know that waveform okay I know that waveform it is square root 2 Vs sine omega t and I would like to get the area for where from alpha this angle is alpha and that is P and this is uh, P plus alpha. So from alpha to P plus alpha, the integral of that thing divided by P will give us uh, the waveform. So let's uh, try to drive that thing, okay? So VD, let me write it here. So VD uh, is equal to, that is equal to uh, for alpha to P plus alpha, right? Square root two Vs sine omega t d omega t. This is the voltage uh, seconds or voltage radians. And since I am just calculating it for one period, and you know that thing is repeating itself, either you can multiply that thing by two and divide by two p, or you can uh, divide that thing by uh, p. So let's. Uh, in order to get the average when dividing by 1 over p and let's take those things out vs divided by p and the integral of sine is minus cosine okay minus cosine omega t at where from alpha to p plus alpha so let's uh, write that thing square root 2 vs divided by uh, P and minus cosine uh, P plus alpha okay minus minus cosine alpha 
So actually minus P plus alpha, okay, just that type, cosine P plus alpha, for example, cosine uh, 60, or let's say cosine 30 is square root divide, uh, divided by two. But if you look at uh, 209, uh, then it is minus square root uh, over two. So that is equal to minus cosine alpha, right? So that thing becomes minus two Vs here divided by P times and minus minus. So this becomes cosine alpha minus minus. Again, it becomes another uh, cosine alpha, right? So that equation becomes 2 square root 2 Vs divided by P times cosine alpha. So this is a kind of interesting and actually you can uh, double check that one. If, if alpha is equal to 0, okay, so it becomes like cosine alpha is equal to 1. So that becomes the same case a diet rectifier 2 square 2 divided by p so it is 0 0.9 uh, uh, vs okay so as you increase as you increase alpha so that value is going to reduce and with that reduction you will be able to control your output voltage right so here you as you see the generalized term you know 2 square 2 vs and uh, this is the rms value divided by p cosine alpha so when alpha is equal to zero so that just you know behaves like a diet rectifier and you can see it at the output voltage and the uh, interesting thing is if alpha is smaller than pi over 2 this means that cosine alpha term is positive so you can have a positive voltage and when it is like pi over 2 like cosine uh, pi over 2 is equal to 0 so you will be able to give 0 voltage so that 0 voltage let me try to show you here uh, let me clean that one as well right if you are applying again it is not uh, really practical but just for the discussion if you are firing at alpha then you have uh, that waveform right and that positive uh, sorry negative regions will be equal to positive regions they will be uh, symmetrical and you can you know estimate the output voltage will be zero uh, as you expect and that is you know what it shows here and more interestingly if you apply a firing angle larger than pi over 2 okay if cosine if alpha is larger than uh, pi over 2 so let's say I don't know 120 degrees so it will imply a minus a minus right here uh, negative negative output voltage okay so that is why in the first slides I, I I said, you know, it is capable of, let's say this is ID, this is VD, this is minus VD, again, uh, the limitations. So it, it, is, it will be able to work in two quadrants. It can supply positive voltage with positive current, or it can supply a negative voltage with uh, positive current. So we will talk about the power flows, but you know, that is, that is the thing. So this is the, like if you just normalize your output voltage at zero angle so with firing angle as you increase the firing angle your output voltage gets uh, smaller and smaller at 90 degrees it will be zero and actually if you even further increase that one so you will get into the negative voltages and that mode is, is called the inverter mode okay so let's uh, stop for now